What's going on, Detroit Lions fans? We are coming here to you guys live uh, solemnly after a terrible, disappointing loss, 34 to 20 um, in Minnesota. Um, I'm here with you with the DSA. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be excited after a loss like this. But, you know, uh, wh what do you have to say to the people to start off the show, Ryder? I mean, it, it really, really does suck. I mean, there was a couple of positives to take away, but overall it was just a very disappointing game. And uh, at this point, I think it's time to maybe throw in the towel a little bit and uh, maybe start, you know, getting ready for the future. I think, I think a lot of fans are thinking the same way you are. <laughs> uh, Drew, man, what are you thinking after a loss like this? Um, for one, I'm thinking I cannot wait for the NBA to come back and watch the Pistons. I cannot <laughs> I cannot wait for my DiGiorno to come out the oven because I'm really hungry, and I cannot wait to finish this uh, six-pack of Drew Weisers. <laughs> I think a lot of fans are with you there as well. <laughs> Luke, man, what's going on? How have you been? Hey, man, what's going on to everybody, man? Uh, if you in the chat, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell, man. Y'all don't want to miss nothing, and thanks for being here. Uh, you know, hey, listen, this is, why, this is why I tell people to enjoy the game. OK, this is why I tell him, I say, just enjoy the game. Don't don't get too caught up in it. Um, you know, and, you know, I'm just happy our defense is finally turning to turn the corner. Um, you know, I it's amazing to see the level of of um, of, of energy that they use <laughs> as they turn this corner. And I'm just happy to see. I mean, Everson Griffin, greatest trade ever, like <laughs> ever. Did you see how much pressure you putting on Cousins? Like, like, I'm just like so excited. Like, oh my god! Like, like we got the best linebacker in the NFL and Jamie Collins. I mean, he only missed every fucking tackle, every tackle. <laughs> like he only, like he, like this, like this dude literally, literally touched every person who scored a touchdown. I feel like, and they just still went through it every tackle. I'm just glad that this all happened. Desmond Trufant, great free agent signing. Uh. Two more years, baby. Two more years. I just want two more years of Matt Patricia. <laughs> and um, I'm living my best life, you know. Um, oh, for, those who don't, for those who don't know, that's sarcasm. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Oh, real quick. Shout out to my – shout out to Ryder. Did y'all see Ryder on the big screen today? Did y'all see him right on the big screen? I saw you today, Ryder. I was, I was, I was happy to see my man get some love out there on the TV. Yeah. I didn't see that. What do you mean? Where was that? No, I didn't. You didn't see it. They had them featured. The commercials. They had, yeah, they had, they had them featured when they came back. They had him. They was like, yeah, we had. They had his name up there. They had a picture. I believe that was him and his dad. Cause I remember what his dad looks like. That was his dad. And yeah. then it was, it was like, uh, he had a picture. He had like multiple pictures of him at the stadium, and you know, doing different props and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh man, I was. Yeah, I missed so that man. I, just for some context, I was officially named the Detroit Lions 2020 Fan of the Year, and that's why oh, I was that's, 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 that's wow. that's that's wow. on TV. Congrats! Yeah. Congrats! Hell yeah! Yeah. Oh. See, I I I don't watch I don't watch it with the volume up, so y'all got to excuse the hell out of me. I didn't. I just knew I saw him. I was like, oh, that's my man Ryder, and I had like a thousand <laughs> people hitting me up on Discord. Like, is that Ryder? Why he looks so much younger right there? I like the yeah, mustache. Well, he, I'm like, he shaved. Years ago. <laughs> Look, I'm yeah. telling myself, I said, I said, I said he shaved the mustache. I don't, don't hate. He, he shaved the mustache. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, overall, listen, this game right here is much of what I said when people was telling me I was batshit crazy and out of my mind. I'm like, look, you beat you beat a Jacksonville Jaguars team who wasn't that good, full of injuries. You also beat uh, a, a, a Falcons team because the head coach was an idiot. All he had to do was take a knee, game over. Um, and then you come back and get a stinker. Oh, man, hold on. All right. Uh, OMG, man, how are you doing? <laughs> Start off the show, man. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Um, man, just everybody play like trash. Um, everybody, except, except for Jack Fox. I think, <laughs> I think Fox is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> who was just he was just booming kicks just but everybody Dude, else is playing you like, wrong like, omg you are so wrong man, griffin born out what you mean listen listen man what? look man i'm not i'm not in the mood luke 
Yeah, I'm not in the mood. Today ain't a good day for that one. Today ain't a, today ain't a good day for that one. For real, for real, for real. For real. Nah, man, nah, nah. But on the on some real, real talk, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all see, I kind of, I actually, actually want to talk gangster like how I normally talk. But I can't right now. You know what I'm saying? I like to use a whole lot of words right now that I can't really use. So I'm trying to shape them <laughs> because I, I talk different. You know what I'm saying? Oh. But uh, I oh, was just even going into battle rap mode. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, man. Like, all right, look, check this out. When Matt Prater start missing field goals, you know shit bad. Okay, <laughs> um, he's missing field goals. Dalvin Cook was was was. Was a skipping through our defense. Um, we was making Kirk Cousins look like he was he was like the the second coming of of Air Air Minnesota. I mean, we was just and then and then Matt Stafford, man. Oh my God, listen, man. I I uh, okay. Well, I we're, gonna gonna into into we're gonna get into it. We're gonna we're gonna get into it. Matt we Stafford. Got... <laughs> we just we just we just see we just had to see the decline happen in front of us and for us to really believe that that was going to happen. And I knew it was going to happen. I seen that it was going to happen, but nobody believed me. Like everybody was crucifying me. And I just like, man, I can see it. I'm, I see it coming. I, I'm, I'm adding it up. You got 10 years back injury, 11 year back injury. Oh, you 32. Oh, mm, I don't know. 32 year olds with a hurt back don't really play too good. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were the one. You were definitely the one championing that belief that we should trade Stafford before the, de- yeah. the decline hits. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but b- before we get started, I do want to shout out everybody in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what's up? Uh, you could call me Funk. What's up? The Gray One Mike. Uh, Troy Thibodeau. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Ra- uh, Ryan. Uh, what's going on, man? Marcus Willis. General View. One Pride Nation. DMAP Zoom. Benjamin Foe. Who else do we have here? Hmm. F- Frederick Jackson and Carl Campbell, man. What's up, everybody? Good to have you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, Luke, I think you're uh, going to say one more thing and then we can get started with, with the questions. Or did you want to just get started? I, I'm ready to rock and roll, you know, because right. I want to point out all the good stuff. I want to point out all the great things that I saw today that I was said to be crazy about. I mean, okay. Luke, all right. All Luke, right. All please, right. please don't, Luke. Please yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta ask you a question, Luke. How come every time we win, you point out the bad, but every time we lose, you point out the good? <laughs> Listen, when we win, I thought the good too. I mean, like I said, when we beat the Falcons, I thought that was the best coach game I had ever seen from from Matt Patricia. I thought it was. I thought that they, I thought, I thought that they did a lot of good things in those games. But the problem is, is this: the, the fans is the reason I'm responding this way. Because when when you see something and you give an honest take on it, you got to be on coke or crack or some type of narcotic for saying something like this. And the reality is, is this: Matt Patricia should have been fired after the first season. Even even some of the uh, of, of you guys, the members of the DSA, was like, "No, nah, man, yeah, he three years, he's changing the culture." I said, "But what culture is he building? What do you see that lets you know that the culture is going the right way?" We're in close games, and when you're losing close games, it's because of coaching. And then I look at it, um, I look at it, and it's like, okay, um, it's like, okay, what do I supposed to say? Uh, oh, they did great. I can't make no excuses for this. And I'm not going to get myself down. I told you, I had already, once they capped them after that first year, I had already was like, bro, I'll just wait to see how it go, and I'll judge it game by game. And every time I do it, I see more and more proof that I'm not crazy. That what I saw is exactly what I thought it was going to be. And we have to be honest as fans. We got hyped up because we was three and three, even though we beat two trash teams and one team beat itself. Okay. And then we get a reality slap in the face from the coach, a reality slap in this game. This man had 200 and some yards of rushing today. 200 and some yards of rushing. Yikes. That's crazy. He had he had almost he had almost as many yards as, as in, in this game as we had. Now, if he had more yards in this game than we did by halftime, it was terrible. 
Well, look, so honestly, to me, that, that's honestly going to get us into our first question. So I'm just going to start off with you, and I'm going to pose the question to you. So Delvin Cook rushed, just like you said, for over 200 yards. What did the Lions in particular, and you, you can't just say, you know, Patricia's the problem. What did they do in particular that, that they failed in order to stop the run? Well, the biggest thing was missed tackles. Jamie Collins, I don't – every – every all them big runs, where's Jamie Collins? Everybody talk about how trash Jared Davis is, but he goes, he goes a news flash for you. All that trash talk that they were saying about Jared Davis, I, all I saw was Jamie Collison doing all the things that y'all was beating down Jared Davis for. He missed tackles. and he d- Collins wasn't even in position majority of the time. He just, I mean, it was terrible. That's the, that's the main part of it, with the fact that they was missing tackles. The other part of it is, where was Jared Davis at in this game? Where was the personnel He's- change up? He's on the COVID list, Luke. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we're, 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 okay, why, why, is, why is Everson Griffin in the two point stands so much? That why I, are they that doing answer. that? <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Omg, Omg, with the play what the, up, the, 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 on, on the goal line, on the goal line. Why? Who in the hell was um? Uh, what's it called? Call a stretch run play. You know, play for Adrian Peterson on the two, uh, on the two, on the two, and then wait a minute, the one with a defensive player was uh was playing safety. Or, I mean, that's, that's what you find that was playing safety. Yeah, yeah, back there, guard so, nobody. So I'm just saying, like to me, this 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 is this is a player poor execution and poor coaching, but it always fought at the feet of the coach because guess what? At the end of the day, you know, they just did not look prepared. They didn't look like they cared, and they didn't look like they came for a football game. It's just I, – I, I don't know. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that definitely echoes everything that uh, we were saying pregame for sure. Drew, uh, uh, what did you think, man? What did you think about Delvin Cook rushing for over 200 yards on Patricia's defense, and what do you think the Lions did, and how did they fail – um, in regards to stopping the run. Minnesota was bigger, stronger, and faster than us. That old line was just pushing us all over the place, so we had no answer for it. Our linebackers played so piss poor. They were all in the wrong gap, total wrong read. I can't tell you how many times Cook ran through the line of scrimmage up the gut going untouched into the secondary. <sighs> like, yeah. just play after, like If I would have done a shot game for every time he went through the line of scrimmage not getting touched, I wouldn't be able to be here right now because I wouldn't be able to talk like that. It's so, so bad. Poor coaching. And it's the same play. It's, it's literally what we run with Adrian Peterson <laughs> all game, every down. Mm-hmm, and yep. it threw him up the gut. And we're like, oh, we don't know what they were doing that. We thought they were going to do a play action pass or something. Like, we're like half ass in this thing. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it, I said this in my live stream. Matt Patricia can build freaking rockets. How can he not coach? A defense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that, that, that's the truth. That's the truth. Listen, yeah. the yeah. only piece of evidence you need to know about a head coach is the side of the ball that they're most responsible for that they came in with, that they should be showing improvements on. You go and look at all those head coaches who come in and have success. The side of the ball that they have success on is, is doing fairly okay. Ours is not. And, and, and the idea that we're going to trade capital for people who are washed up and, and clearly, I mean, he got juked by Kirk Cousins. You can't tell nobody <laughs> you got juked by Kirk Cousins. <laughs> right, Come on, Everson right. Griffin. Come on. Like, you yeah. can't have this happening. And, 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 and Drew, Drew, you bring up a very, another point that I, I forgot all about. I, I literally, you right. It was all up the gut because the same thing Untouched. happened with Matt. Right, with Madison. Madison ran right into the pile and bounced out of it. And I was like, wow, this where we at? This is yeah. where we at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. OMG, man, what do you think? Why did we fail to stop Delvin Cook, man? Um, I don't really care because I got him on my fantasy squad. And <laughs> he was well. I'm with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I'm not talking say, about brother fans. I'm talking about fan duel. Delvin Cook with it up. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we – I don't know why, man. Uh, this is a linebacker play, man. Um, Because if you look – like Penasini and Shelton was there. They was doing. They was doing. You know what they schemed to do was basically move the line of scrimmage and and you know at, at their position and kind of take blockers. Like that's what they were supposed to do. And the linebackers and Patricia Skinny make all the plays. And 
they wasn't doing it mm. at okay. all. Like at all. Like n- like none. Like they just they just didn't do nothing. And I just don't like that scheme. I don't like the scheme where your defensive tackles just take up space and eat block, eat blockers. Like I don't I don't I don't like that. I like the four man front. I like and I like the scheme where your guys go and make plays. You know what I'm saying? Like your 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 interior D linemen make plays. That is what we're lacking. If you don't if your linebackers suck, then your interior D linemen have to make plays. You can't be totally weak as hell up front through the middle. Like your interior D linemen is just standing there and then your linebackers ain't doing shit. Like, come on, like that's not a good, that's not good chemistry right there. So that's why Dalvin Cook was running because everything was between the guards, basically. Like he would go outside, maybe between the guard and tackle gap. Basically, it was between the guards where he was just yakking it up because our D, our defensive tackles are supposed to just take up blockers, and our linebackers are supposed to scrape the holes and make plays, and they wasn't making them. And then it was half the time Dalvin Cook would get the ball, and he then he looking right at our safety. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. come or, on, Or man. the safeties behind him and chasing right. him. Exactly. Ryder, what, man, what, what, what did you think? Yeah, what, what's up, Luke? No, I, I would say, was I the only one who noticed that they, they did a whole lot more rotating the D-linemen? Like, I saw a hand in there a whole lot more. I saw them come out with, a, with just one formation where Danny Sheldon was at the D-end spot, and they had the inside guy, it's Everson Griffin, and hand. And they ran the ball right up the gut on them. And I was like, Yo, this is like like did anybody else notice that rotation that we were doing on the D line? It was just like <clears throat> it was weird. No, I, just, I didn't really see that. I was watching to see how often they did it. They kept rotating the D lines in. I thought I just thought like, why are they doing this? Like, I don't know. It was it was just something weird because you was it either be Nick Williams or um Hand who kept getting rotated in and Danny Shelton and Penny Cini was getting put in on what they thought were run downs and then they pass it on us and then they take them out and put them in on what they thought were passing downs and they ran on us and it was just it was just like a repeat like cycle thing you know yeah i don't know i didn't i didn't really see that but i i believe you. i need to watch it back honestly i was just kind of infuriated the whole game to be honest with you but uh writer man what'd you think about uh what do you think about us you know not being able to stop delvin cook at all what do you th- why did we fail I mean, to stop the run I mean, we just didn't get penetration, and our linebackers could not tackle him. I mean, if he'd get to that second level and meet a linebacker, and, you know, Jamie Collins is slipping 10 yards right past him. Like, I mean, it's just – and I, it wasn't even just the rushing yards. You know, there was the third and 10 early in the second half, and, you know, with the Lions stopped in the first two plays, and I'm thinking, all right, this could be a good opportunity. And then, you know what happens? They throw it to Delvin Cook on a, you know, a drag route. He just literally stops moving. Like, he just slows down. And Jamie Collins is about slides 10 feet past him like he's going for a slide tackle in soccer. Like, I mean, it's just the linebackers didn't tackle. The linebackers couldn't keep up with, keep up with him. I mean, Delvin Cook just looked faster, and he looked like he wanted it way more than anybody on our defense. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Delvin Cook just looked like he owned our defense, and he just was just having no issue at all. Like, he was playing with some middle schoolers. Um, so, right now, okay, so – you know, we're going to get into something that might get us a little bit heated. So um, because of what took place in the chat earlier today. So listen, um, Stafford, you know, he's have been having a pretty bad season. Um, OMG, I know you brought it up at the top of the show. Me you, first, you've me been seeing... <laughs> oh, we'll get to you first, man. I know you said at the top of the show, but the question I have posed for you today is, will Stafford be the Lions starting quarterback next season? Mm. Mm. Um. Oh, that's that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> it is only because we just because of our history and and we just don't believe nothing until until they just blow up in our face. Um, I would say no. Um, just because I mean the proof is in the pudding. You know what I'm saying? I would say no, but. So elaborate on that. What do you mean by the proofs in the pudding? What do you think? We always hold on to players for too long, right? We hold on to the players that we don't need to hold on to for too long, and then we get rid of the players that we don't need to get rid of, like, fast. You know what I'm saying? So 
So you think Stafford's a player we shouldn't have really been holding on to no. this entire time? No. I think I honestly nah. This this is what we was having a little heated conversation about. <laughs> okay. I thought we should have got rid of Stafford two seasons ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and I made a video. That was that was one of the first videos I made was when Kyler Murray was in the draft that we need to get Stafford out of here. And it wasn't because Stafford was actually playing bad at the time, it's because I'm like, okay. It's been 10 years now, you know what I'm saying? And he ain't, you know, it's 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 time. It's time for him to move on. And I and I had a lot of fu- a lot of pushback for this. I had a lot of ridicule for this. And then I said it again this year. And I had a lot of pushback and a lot of ridicule. And now I think everybody's starting to see what I was prophesizing, but I was hoping that this would happen before we could actually see it. Because if we see it, the other teams see it. You know what I'm saying? And that means that his value goes down. You know what mm. I'm saying? But Stafford has never been a horrible quarterback. I just want to get to, I just want y'all to understand that coming from me. I never thought Stafford was a bad quarterback. I always thought Stafford was a pretty good quarterback. But I also knew that Stafford was just not the guy to push this team over the hump. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, we need we need to go in a different direction. So wow. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the he'll leave with Patricia. I'm hoping you know they he goes wherever and has a good supporting cast, and maybe he can still manage to you know to fix his career. You know what I'm saying? But I just we just need to start over, man. I mean, stop. Boy. I'm just tired of people fighting it, man. Like y'all, just, y'all, y'all like that, y'all like that girl, and I say y'all and, and me. As a collector, like we like that girl who her girls keep telling her that she need to leave him because he keep putting his hands on her, but she like, but I love him though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't never gonna leave him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he been down for me, and and I just like look, man, like you need to let him go, let it go, let go, and let God. <laughs> man, I don't know, man, I don't know, I don't know. Writer, writer. Are you seeing what you know the prophetic OMG is, has seen? <laughs> are you, are you, <laughs> um, do you think that the Lions will uh, uh, will Stafford be the starting quarterback next season, and should he be? Um, I mean, I think it kind of depends on how they finish this season. Because I mean, if they lose out, right? Say they finish the season three and twelve, or three and thirteen, four and twelve, something like that, and they're in a position to get a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields then I think you almost have to go with it just because, you know, Stafford's older. He's his plays declined quite a bit this season. He's just not, you know, playing like the Stafford we saw last year. So, I mean, if we're in a good position to draft a quarterback, if we're in that top two, top three again, then I don't think that you can pass on that. You know, I just think the value is too great. And I think that, you know, that potential to get that franchise quarterback for the next decade or so is, you know, just it's too valuable to pass up in that situation. But if we finish the season – you know, six and 10, if we finish at seven and nine and the only quarterbacks on the board are like a Trey Lance, then, I mean, I would take Stafford over Trey Lance. I mean, like I, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people like Trey Lance. I'm not really a big fan of him. You know, this quarterback class is pretty good at the top, but overall I don't think it's, you know, anything special. And, you know, outside those big two names and maybe a third guy in Zach Wilson from uh, BYU who's playing really well, like other than those couple of guys, like there's not a lot of quarterbacks in this class and I haven't seen the free agency class, but I don't think it's that good either. So, I mean, it kind of depends to me how we finish the season because, you know, as I said, if we finish really bad and we have that opportunity to draft that next, you know, generational quarterback, then we have to. But if we're in a situation where it's Trey Lance or Matt Stafford, I'm taking Matt Stafford for another year and just sitting and waiting to see what else is up. Mm -mm. (laughs) You got something to say on G to that? Uh, if if you, I mean, you, you feel like that. I know probably a lot of other people feel like that, but that was one of the reasons why I said we should probably tank it. You know what I'm saying? When, mm. when, when the season first started after the first two games, I was like, we need to tank it. We need this to go so, ahead. This, this is it. ridiculous. What, what? We need to go ahead. And name tank name it. one team. Name one team that that tanked it and had success. Name one. Because one team in the, name one in the NFL that has tanked it. 
But that, but this the reason to tank it is to go get that quarterback. That's the reason to tank. Name it. me it's the not, one not, team not, who has not, tanked it and they paid off. It's not about that. It's not about you can you can't bring up stats of this right now. This is what you saying with this, your this, eyes. This ain't this what ain't, this saying, ain't no stat. With my eyes. This what ain't I'm no stat. My eyes. What I'm saying with my eyes is Stafford got to go. And the and and name one is, team. Just give me one. One team that takes. I don't, tank care. I don't and care about it because you can't. That is ridiculous. ridiculous. I'm telling you what the Lions need to do to secure that quarterback. Not what teams have done in the past. They don't team. listen. The listen. Detroit Lions need it to do to secure. Hey, hey, don't, hey, don't, don't interrupt each other, man. Let let OMG talk, then you can respond to it. I'm, I'm like, I understand what you're saying, Luke, but what the Detroit Lions need to do to secure a quarterback is not go 6-10 and 10 or 7-9. and nine. They need to not win no more games. You know what I'm saying? And then they need to go get one of those top quarterbacks. They don't need to go and go 6-10 and 10 and, 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 and that's not good, man. They need to tank it. I've been saying that since the week three. So... All right, Luke, what you got? What do you got to say to that? He can't name a team who has tanked it because no <laughs> team does it. It doesn't exist. Tanking in the NFL don't work. This ain't the NBA. Ain't no one player coming in. I don't care who you get. You can have Peyton Manning on your damn as your quarterback. When you got coaching as bad as Matt Patricia and leadership as bad as Bob Quinn and ownership as bad as the damn Fords, I don't care who the hell you got at quarterback. We have to, as, as fans, need to stop playing. Everybody said they got eyes and they looking with stuff, but ain't nobody really paying attention. Let's keep it 100 for a moment. All right? If Stafford on another team, he balling. Just the same way that happened with Kyle Van Noy, the same thing that happened with everybody, everybody else who leave Detroit and go somewhere else and perform. We talk crap about Eric Ebron, as we should, because he dropped a lot of passes. He did it for the coach. But damn it, he was still better for the coach than he was for the Detroit Lions. And you know why? Because it's coaching. So this whole idea of tanking, I'm not gonna go with that. That's 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 not a fan's thinking right there. No, you know to that back. That is a fan. That's a that's a fan's thinking. That's not a football person's thinking. A football person yeah. understand that in football that the games are won by a team. Well, They're yeah. won by a team. I understand that. I understand yeah. what you're saying, Luke. But the thing is, is is we have to get a quarterback in the draft. I don't want us to pick one up in free agency. I don't want. I want us to start from scratch. And the only way to guarantee that. Is to be at the top of the draft. That's the only way. Hey, I don't, you know, that's real. the only way. Okay, so Russell Wilson, yeah, he, yeah, he was taken in the first round. Oh wait, he wasn't. Tom Brady, he was taken in the first round. Oh wait, he wasn't. Like, come on, man. Do you, do you, but Luke, okay, but Luke, all right, look, 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 look. Guy in the third round, though. <laughs> In, in 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 all fairness, the majority of them are taken, you know, higher. Come on, those are those are the exceptions. But Luke, I mean, what do you think though? Do you think that Stafford will be the Lions' starting quarterback next? Yes, season? yes, and he you, should even be. if Patricia and Bob Quinn are fired and a new yes. coach comes in, and he might. Yes, make if, if a new regime. coach if a, if a new coach comes in and decides that he wants to get rid of Stafford, that's on that coach. But if a new coach come in, he's smart. He would keep Stafford. Okay, get his quarterback of the future and let him ease into the game slowly. The same thing that happened with Kansas City with Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes. They didn't rush Patrick Mahomes into the starting lineup. They just didn't. And even in the case of people like Dak Prescott, he was he was rushing to the starting lineup due to injury. But guess what? They kept the ball on the ground, played defense, and asked him to do the bare minimum. These teams who are going out here getting quarterbacks to save them and be the oh, we're gonna be the future of the they're all failing. That's why Andrew Luck retired early. He got his ass whooped behind a shitty team. And it's just the reality of it. And I hate to be cursing, but I'm just pointing out the fact that this whole idea of tanking doesn't work. And if a new head coach comes in here and he decides that, hey, I want to get a quarterback, well, you better have a veteran in place. Because unless you're telling me we finna start off with with Chase Daniels. It, do, it doesn't make sense. It just right. doesn't make sense. Like, I get I get that people were frustrated with Matthew Stafford. I know that people are tired of seeing Matthew Stafford. I know that people don't want to hear about no freaking Matthew Stafford. I totally get it. I get it. Ben Rothenberger have had these same uh, outbursts of, of bad games, bad seasons, and bad play. You know what they did? They have drafted multiple, multiple quarterbacks. And none of them have unseated Ben Rosenberger. You know why? Because they was not going to let Ben Rosenberger go 
until they got something new. We ain't talking relationships. I can see, I, I can see we talking about like, oh, should I get rid of my girlfriend? Oh, no, I'm going to wait till I get a new one. Then I'll dump her. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying <laughs> this is a business. This is a business. And right now, your best option is the guy with number nine on his chest. It's just the reality of it. And until the you have somebody that... The only thing I could think of is if if writers, you know, a uh, situation happens and we have a you know pretty good pick in the draft, and then the new guy coming in wants his new regime to buy him extra years. You know what I mean? If he starts up with Stafford again, that's not very much a new regime. It's still kind of the Stafford era. But once the Stafford era is over, he could blame his unsuccessful seasons if he does have any on the fact that he's looking for a quarterback or whatever he's trying to you know what i'm saying i like coaches no. do that when they come into a new regime that that's happened i mean but but you but he, you can also look at it from from this standpoint that that let's say if we if we do end up in right a situation with that high draft pick and a new coach still want to get the quarterback why can't he get the quarterback and, and keep the guy that he got i don't understand this all right yeah, maybe. Right, uh, but right. one second, one oh. second, OMG, one second. PD jumped yeah. in here. He said he wanted to get a quick take. Uh, what's going on, PD? All right, I'm not going to be here for very long. I just heard the talk about tanking, and I had and I had to come on. Luke, you, you took a lot of the words out of my mouth, but I'm going to expand on it. Guys, there's no quarterback. I don't know what you guys see. Like, there's no quarterback that is just going to magically come in and turn this whole operation around. We, we got to establish a team. I would worry about the team before we worry about the quarterback. We got eight games to go, so I'm more worried about that. But we got to establish a team before. I want to get a team together before I worry about a quarterback. It worked for Patrick Mahomes. worked for Facts. Russell Wilson. worked for Facts. Ben Rogers. Facts. It, it works. Hell, it even, even Ben Roethlisberger to an extent. He got drafted to a team that just went to the <clears throat> AFC Championship game the year Facts. prior, I'm pretty sure. So let's get a team established first. And then worry about the quarterback second. There's no goddamn quarterback that's going to come in and save this uh, franchise. Unless you're facts. prime Tom Brady or unless you're prime Aaron Rodgers. Maybe, only maybe, Russell Wilson, there is no quarterback that's going to come in here and save us. we got to get a full team first. And besides, the Lions, tank for, the Lions tanked during the whole Matt Millen era. What happened? Shit happened. Shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> We talked. We tanked for the whole goddamn Matt Millen era. Nothing happened. It, it's we're still. I would argue we are partially still recovering from that garbage. Not entirely, Fact. but partially, we're still recovering from it. So no, I'm sorry, OMG. I love you, but I, I just I can't agree with you, dude. There's right. nobody that's gonna come in and say. Uh, there's no one that's gonna come in and save us. I mean. <laughs> Like I said, unless you're a prime Tom Brady or a prime Aaron Rodgers, like those two are like the closest things to gods that I have seen in my lifetime. But I mean, obviously they're not gods, but they're the closest thing that you will see to football gods. But guess what? We're, we're probably not, that's probably not going to happen for us. But yeah, I just want to say that really fast. OMG, I love hey, you. But I, can't I love you too, man. I love you too. But listen, listen, what I'm, I think y'all got it twisted what I was saying. I'm not saying a new quarterback is going to come in and he's going to save the day. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to start and build. Like, we need to start and build with a new quarterback. Like, you, you can't take a team and, and like, okay, the quarterback will be the last piece we add to it. Like, nobody does that. Well, some but teams do that. They don't. They do that. One second. One second. The Chiefs I mean, did it. The Chiefs did it. The Patrick they, but, what put them over the top. Russell yeah, but Al, but they but they were building around Alex Smith. They thought Alex Smith could actually do it. They weren't building. No, they, no, they wasn't. No, they wasn't. No, no, they wasn't. No, they was not, bro. They got Alex Smith. They thought Alex Smith was the piece that could take them over the top because they seen what he did with so, San Francisco. So, so they took they took Tyreek Hill so Alex Smith could throw him bombs. Really? No, I'm not. I'm really? Not, I'm not saying one piece. I'm talking about the team. They built the team because they thought Alex Smith could take that team. Like, they had already built that team up. And Alex Smith, when they found out he couldn't do it, then they – What do you mean he couldn't do it? He was, Alex Smith was successful in Kansas City. What do you – okay. But, but, but he, right. he couldn't get him over the hit. Like, he – come on, man. Guys, he, guys. He, come okay. on, man. Alex Smith. Look, look, to OMG's <laughs> point, I'm going to say this. Look. There are teams that definitely did it, uh, built a whole team, and then plugged in a quarterback, especially a rookie quarterback on a rookie deal so that they could allocate a lot of money to their defense and stuff like that, and it's worked, right? It's worked with a lot of teams. It worked with tons of teams. But 
that's in the ideal scenario. Like, who wouldn't want that? But do you think that the Lions organization is capable of doing that? That's the problem. So, that, so, so, what was what's going to end up happening in practicality is we're just going to be searching for a quarterback for like ten years, like we were probably, before. That. Probably. So, <laughs> point makes a lot of sense to me. If there's a guy like Trevor Lawrence out there, and right now it's looking like our season's a wash, and we're going to fire Patricia and Bob Quinn, why not fire him? And then. Even if we do tank this season or whatever, the next coach and GM is going to bring their culture or whatever. Like the culture of this is not going to continue into next season because if it does, that's horrible. We don't want that to happen anyway. So if you do cut this ties with, with our coach and GM and tank the season, and, and it won't even be necessarily tanking. It'll just be failing like we're doing right now. So I don't see if, if, if the only way you can build your team – is to quote unquote with this false belief of tanking, then you already in trouble. Because I can tell you right now, good teams aren't built like that. Kansas I mean, City, Kansas City had the thirty second pick and still managed to find diamonds and jewels through all these different drafts and stuff like this. I'm not. I'm not no, <clears throat> if this whole idea of tanking and getting a quarterback but and all that it saying, doesn't make sense. Nobody's saying to tank throughout the entire building process, tank for five years or some shit. No, like if, you, but if you're in a situation like we are in right now, that we're prob like we just lost again, we're probably not going to make the playoffs. We're probably going to be the worst in the division already, even if we don't tank. So should we just rattle off a couple of useless victories just to drive up, you know, just to like lose value in our draft capital? I don't know. Nope. It doesn't well, matter. It doesn't. Listen, right. hold on, hold on, hold on. But wait, you know hold on, real? hold on. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Really quick, we talking about draft capital. These y'all are the same people who was all like, "Man, it's no big deal. We give up a six round pick for Everson Griffin." Now we talking about draft capital. No, absolutely not. What, you what are you gonna get in a six round pick versus listen, versus listen, what, listen, the top listen. of the first round? That's not. That's not I, the listen, same. Hold thing. on. I'm finna, I'm finna show you the difference. The, the the difference is is this that six round pick is still considered draft capital. What you got out for that six round pick is literally nothing. That's why they was willing to give the they were like, oh, you giving us a six? We'll take a six for Everson Griffin. Yeah, but usually for a wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, anyway, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. Only the Lion fan base will be crunk about getting somebody like Everson Griffin without the, without the proof to go to it. And all I'm pointing out to you is is this. This idea of draft capital and using and we losing draft capital. I want my team to win every game. I, I really do. I want them to win every game. But I'm also a realist. I, I'm also hip to the fact of what the reality is. There have been teams who have been into the dumpster and they didn't tank for it, i.e. the Rams. Sean McVay came in and took what he had and said, all right, I'm going to work with it. The thing that I'm looking at is, is this. This whole talk about moving on from Stafford is just dumb because I guarantee you, if Aaron Rodgers is tossed into the fire before he was ready to rock and roll, we wouldn't be probably talking about Aaron Rodgers the same way. The same thing with Patrick Mahomes and some of these other quarterbacks. They they was not tossed into the fire like that. I'm and to me, I'm to me, to me, to me, if you go out and you draft a quarterback with this damn fan base, all you're gonna hear all year long is star whoever. If the next person is if it's if it's freaking the marshmallow man. Marshmallow man, marshmallow man. All you gonna hear is thing. <laughs> and to me, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to just get rid of Stafford to start somebody else and have him be ruined. Build a team, get good coaching, and then we can move from there. No, okay. I understand what you're saying. Hold on, real quick, because I just, just want to say this real quick. I I understand what you're saying, Luke, and I wanted to do it your way two years ago, right? I was like, we need to draft a guy, have a guy sit. And then when Stafford's contract is up, we'll get rid of him. But the problem now is, is Stafford has shown he's deteriorating. And he, you know he's what I'm not, saying? No, he's not. He, That's, yes, oh, my he God. Is, man. Luke, you said Listen, this came to me. Remember, remember, Luke, you was like, he's running in the sacks. He's stepping up. He just running in the Listen, sacks. listen. On, I will he always listen. I will, he listen, I will, like, listen, I will always talk about his bad play. Has he played bad? Yes. Is that a decline? No. You got to understand what happens in games. I put in the chat, when the game was going on, I said, well, they just scored. So we are finna go full-fledged pass all game, and we finna get a turnover because they already know that all we're going to have to be able to do this draft is throw. And what happened? We got to throw a turnover. I said, they don't score it again. We can't run the ball because that kills clock. 
That means that we were one-dimensional. They literally just sat on it. That's all it was. Once you make a team one-dimensional, it's game time, baby. I don't care what happens. If you can get them to be one-dimensional, you can win a lot of games. And and, 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 and it's easy as, ch as, uh, as chess. It's checkmate. The moment I get you in a one-dimensional situation, I can shut you down. And the problem is, is in today's game, they knew he had to pass. So guess what they did? They played the pass and said if he run the ball, good for them. They can have whatever they want on the run because that's going to kill clock for them and they ain't going to have time to come back. So they just played the pass. There were other right. games where he just played bad, right? Like he just fought off, played bad. I called it out. He played bad last year. I called it out. Um, but the reality was I also called out the play calling. Why are we not running the ball more? I don't know if anybody else noticed this, but Swift, Carry On, and AP – were, were doing pretty okay in the run between the mix-ups. They were getting those 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 nice runs going. We just get the score get ahead of us and became one-dimensional. So the decline is not fair. We said the same thing about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers wow. declining. Wow. Okay, Luke, I got a one question for you. Okay, name one season that's been worse than this for Stafford since Jim Schwartz. Name one season. 2018. Right. Well, that's when you had like broken fingers and all that, right? No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm talking about from the start. I'm talking from the start of the season till halfway through the season. Name one year since Jim Schwartz that Stafford's played this bad. No, you can't. You can't. None. You, you can't, can't name a so, season. No. Okay, so if, so if he's 32 years old, coming off a back to back season with broken vertebrae, and he's having his worst right. season. That that that's why that whole drafting a quarterback and letting him sit behind Stafford and learning is out the window. That should have right. been done two years ago. Now you dude, don't have time dude, for that. Guys, you don't listen, have time dude, for think, that. We see both of your points. We gotta move on though. Like seriously. Okay, right, <laughs> we gotta yeah, move yeah. on. Yeah. All, right, all, all right. right. I'm just gonna can I get my final thoughts real fast, real Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So I've I just wanted to come on and rant real fast. I don't believe in tanking. Guys, we got eight be pissed as hell today. That's why I said on my pregame show or our pregame show, I, I said, be angry as hell today. But tomorrow, it's just back to whatever your life is. Like, I'm going to be angry as hell all day. That This is the number one way to ruin my day. I even said, <laughs> I told real that. I told Jane all that. But yeah, I'm going to be mad as hell today. And then I'm going to be, I'll be fine tomorrow. But we got eight games to go. I don't know what's going to happen. It's not looking promising. But. We'll, we'll be here for y'all. So, yeah, we're going to get through this together, everybody. So, I don't know. I don't, that didn't make anybody feel better. But, yeah, thank you, Bill, for letting <laughs> me come on for that. Thank you for letting me come on for that brief moment. And, uh, yeah, good luck, guys. Have a fun rest of the show. Stay up, PD. Stay right, up. Yeah, PD. Salute, PD. Salute. I don't know what happened to Drew either, but guys, there is 37 people in the chat right now, and there's only like, what is it? Uh, there's only 19 likes, so if you guys can go ahead and click that like button, it would be, uh, we'd very much appreciate it. Okay, but moving on. Okay, listen, so this is this was an unexpected positive that came out of this game, right? <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw it coming, but uh, what do you guys think has attributed to the Lions' success at blocking punts, man? Two block punts today. That was crazy. Ryder, man, what do you think attributed to that? Uh, I just think Braden Coons is the best special teams coordinator in the NFL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it comes down to coaching. It really, really does. I mean, you know, it's not like this special teams is all that different from last year. I mean, there's a couple different pieces, but overall, it's generally the same guys. And the only real difference is, you know, especially on the coverage team and the team – or in the guys that are blocking punts is, you know, the coaching. The coaching is different. Braden Coombs is the best special teams coordinator in the NFL, and he gets his guys to play hard, and those guys that are playing hard get the stats and get those punt blocks. Yeah, it, it, it it's phenomenal what's happening, both from our punting side and blocking punts, what's happening this season, man. It's hard to disagree with that, man. Luke, what do you think has attributed to the uh, success for blocking punts? How many block punts we got this season? Three. Three. Who are, we got two against we got two against the Vikings and the other one came against the Colts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's my that's my thoughts. Like whoop whoop de do. 
Like I <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> like, see, like seriously. Like I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, listen, let, we, I'm not I, like to me, that wasn't even the biggest. I saw some other positives, but that wasn't even a like 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 listen, like they got some blocks and losing efforts. I, I mean, like we, the scores were already outraged at that point. Like, okay, great. Like, okay. Come but, on, Luke. Like, okay, but when you pair that with the fact of uh, Fox doing so well on the other side of special teams, it, it is pretty special what our special teams is doing. Like, yeah, come on. I mean, listen, cool. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think the fact that um, that we got a good special teams coach is is more uh, proof positive that the right coaching can make anything look good. And I believe it was Ryder who pointed out ain't much changed. Yet we're getting more results. So, um, you know, a, a lot of times I just look at it and I just say, what was the biggest significant difference? It's, it's, it wasn't. It was the coaching. So good for them. But <sighs> Hey, man, I don't know. I, I'm happy about it. I'm happy for Romeo Okawara extending, you know, his great season that he's having so far for, you know, for, you know, relative to what he's been doing. It's, it's been a great season for him. And, you know, Austin Bryant finally coming out to the team and getting that block punt. That's been awesome. OMG, man, what do you think about the block punts that we've had uh, this game and last last game? Man, um, I, I feel what Ryder's saying, man. It's, it's the culture, man. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just the culture, man. I, I feel what Ryder's saying, man. I can't. I really can't expand on it more because I'll just be reiterating everything that he just said. <laughs> All right, I feel you. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question. And this, you know what, guys? This is we've been on for like forty-five minutes. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. This is gonna be the last question. Then we could get into some, uh, get into some questions in the comments. So go ahead right now if uh, if you want to drop any questions you have for us right now. Thank you. And. Uh, Okay, we're gonna get into the last question. And uh, okay, why <laughs> why does Kirk, Kirk Cousins pl- play so damn well against the Lions? And uh, so he got 220 passing yards, three touchdowns. His you know QBR was off the charts. You know he had a great game. Uh, Luke, man, what do you think it was? What do you think it was this game and just every game that he faces us in? They can run the damn ball. We are we are 0 and six under Matt Patricia versus the Vikings. They can run the damn ball. That's a, they, they run the ball, they play defense, and they ask the quarterback to do very little. Very little. If I'm asked to do very little, like, I'm going to do good too. You tell me, hey, I need you to complete 10 passes this game. How many shots you giving me? Uh, about 30. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll let everybody do the rest. That's all it is. They run the ball, they play defense, they ask the quarterback to do very little, and they, they had coaches always constantly on the adjustment. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is much uh much of the same that, that I've been wanting for the Lions for the longest. Like, stop asking the quarterback to be the savior. Like I'm telling you right now, stop we gotta stop that. All the good teams who are who are winning are not leaving it all up to the quarterback. They're not. And the ones who got all these like all these teams with these great quarterbacks, they're not really they're not really doing nothing past the regular season a lot of the times because they can't run the ball in the playoffs. So if you can run the ball and play defense, that's why they keep on beating us. Every time we look up, Cook killing us. At least with Adrian Peterson, we was able to make him force uh, like, uh, like fumble the ball up like a few times. We ain't it's like with Cook, man. He just literally cooks us every single time, and and it's, it just boils down to coaching and and, and the coaching ability to say I don't need to put the game in the hands of Kirk Cousins. I'll put it in the hands of the rest of the other people, and that's how it should be on all the teams. Right. Okay. Uh, Writer, man, what do you think is the cause of Kirk Cousins playing so well? Do you think it's the run game like Luke says? I mean, yeah, I think that, you know, obviously a great running game is going to make any quarterback look great. I mean, everybody in the comments that hates Stafford, Stafford is what? He's 12 and two with a hundred yard rusher, 13 and two, maybe after the Jacksonville game, like, you know, every quarterback looks good with a great run game. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're Patrick Mahomes or if you're Mitch Trubisky. Every quarterback looks good with a great run game because as soon as you could be two dimensional or three dimensional, as soon as you can mix things up and make it so that, you know, a defense can't commit strictly to the pass or strictly to the run. I mean, that's when you're going to have your most effective days. And, you know, like Luke said, Dalvin Cook always seems to have a great day against us. And he's just a phenomenal running back. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in agreement with you guys. I mean, when you have a running back like that and it just opens up the entire field for you, I mean, you know, it doesn't even matter if teams are stacking the box. Delvin Cook is still getting the first down. 
Uh, OMG, what do you think, man, about uh, Kirk Cousins? He put up an amazing stat line against us, and again, he just cooked us. So why does Kirk Cousins play so well against the Lions? Uh, it's, it's what Luke said, um, everything about what Luke said. Plus, the Lions is like that team where if you're in a slump and you play us, you break out of that slump. Like, you ever notice that? Like guys, like man, he's been quiet for weeks, and then he played the Lions, and man, he had a he had a hell of a game. So I just think we're just one of those teams that are just friendly to the to the other team's offense, man. And just and just hey, if you having a slump, play the Lions. You'll hit you'll hit your stride again. So <laughs> that's that's just what I think it is. That mixed with everything Luke said. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, I, we're going to get into the fa- uh, chat questions right now. So again, if you have any questions for us, drop them in the chat. Uh, you know, we're obviously going over the loss. If you're tuning in right now and uh, hit that like button, if you haven't already. So general- real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So Stafford has officially cleared concussion protocol. So he oh, doesn't okay. have a concussion. So he's good to go for next week. Just as an update. Oh, man. St- listen, Stafford. St- <laughs> That the fact that, I don't even know why they put him in concussion protocol because he clearly got out of the way of the hit. So I got kneed in the back. Wasn't the it head. the ref that did it? No, it was a defensive lineman that just kneed him in the back of the head. No, I meant wasn't yeah. it the ref that put him in concussion protocol? Oh, that yeah, happened. yeah, the referee did. They thought they thought he got hit to the helmet, but no, I, did I didn't him think favorite. that they did him yeah. a favor. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. They did. Right. And, and and the sad part is is the sad part is is is. I'm telling you, man. I'm watching the, the I'm watching the Panthers with Christian McCaffrey back, and now they got him and a mobile quarterback with Teddy Bridgewater. And I'm like, man, y'all out here going at it with the Kansas City Chiefs? Like, like, man. The, the reality is, is this, man. We if a team got a running back, we we not doing it. But again, it don't matter because our defense has turned the corner. So hey, it don't make a difference. This. This is why I asked that question, and I had everybody telling me, "You even you got to admit, no, we play some trash people. Defense ain't turned the corner. Like y'all, like our fan bases, we 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 grasping that straw so bad, man. And I, I wish that we would stop doing this. I wish we would right. stop doing this. We got to be realistic, and like if you see good in the game, you got to see the bad too. No, hundred percent. All right, right general view. First question. Uh, we're gonna go pretty quick with these ones. So, who was calling the plays on defense, Ryder? What do you think, man? It doesn't matter. They both sucked. <laughs> yeah, Corey man, Underland. Do you think Corey Underland was doing it this week, or do you think yeah, he has the whole season? No, he, he no he he had since since I would say since past that I'm gonna say past that once we start that Cardinals game he'd been calling the defense. The, the problem is the problem is is they was doing that weird rotation stuff that I could not wrap my finger around as to why they're doing this. Um, and, and the other biggest problem is, is there was a lot of belief in Jamie Collins and he failed. We talking about Matthew Stafford, but there's a bigger problem. Jamie Collins, if he does his job, then the ball goes into whose hand? Kirk Cousins. He couldn't even do his job, but just making sure you keep gap containment. And therefore, this is where we look up and see, um, you know, this is where we look up and see the difference in the outcome. To me, Jamie Collins, Jamie Collins today was pathetic. Like he 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 should give his paycheck back. Like it, he he didn't come to work. He didn't come yeah. to work, and if if All he right. did, he was playing. He was he came to work sick, getting everybody else sick. I'm with you, man. All right, uh, OMG, man. Who do you think was calling the defense? You with Luke? Um, yeah, it, it got to be Underland. I mean, you can't say that every time the defense. You know, plays horrible is Patricia, and then when it plays with a little bit of life, it's Underland. Like it got to be Underland. Like if it was him, <laughs> if it was him, if it was him before, then it's him now. I don't think they playing like hot potato with the defense. So. I don't even know if we. I don't. We don't know definitively if it was Underland before. I mean, I don't think we know who's really calling the defense. But I mean, I think it's probably Underland. But who really knows? Yeah, um. Yeah. All right. Not a Lions fan, but man, this better be sarcastic. Like you know, <laughs> I hate when I hate when the Stafford haters come just when he has like that fucking bad game, and it's just like just sticking the point, like the knife, just twisting it deeper. Like, all right, we get it. He had a bad game, man. You know. Um. All right. Question. 
who is the best head coach available for us? All right. In my opinion, you asked available for us. So like who's probably going to even remotely consider coming here. I think the answer is Jim Harbaugh, in my opinion. Um, uh, that's it's just for obvious reasons. He's here in Michigan. His NFL career was very solid. And uh, I think that he could do really well here. And he, he fits the attitude that I want them to bring. Um, Ryder, what do you think? What what head coach of what is the best available head coach for us? Um, I mean, I don't know if he's going to be available. I don't know if he's going to want to leave his head coaching spot at Minnesota. But you know, I still like PJ Flag. I just think he brings a different energy and a different attitude. And you know, I know he doesn't necessarily have the NFL resume, but I mean, he's rebuilt a team in Wisconsin. You know, Big Ten Coach of the Year last year. I mean, he he's a really solid head coach, and I don't know if he'll want to you know move a couple states over to uh, come help out Detroit, but if we could get him here, I think he would be a huge asset. I think he'd be huge for this team. Yeah, no, I, okay. I, I, that's a, that's one that I haven't really heard much about, so that's interesting. I definitely need to uh, research that one a bit more. Luke, man, what about you? Who's the best head coach available for us? The most qualified is Jim Harbaugh. If you, if you look at my rubrics, they have to have a history uh, of being a head coach in this league or in some organization where they have had success Check, he's got that. Been a head coach in college, been a head coach in the NFL, now I'm back to college. Um, they have to have an ability to be able to build a program. Well, let's go through and look at it. They credited him with building a program at Stanford. Okay, I know he built a program at Michigan. Even though Michigan is not doing well against Ohio State and not doing well against Michigan State, I, I, I get it, but he has built a program that is totally different than what you've been seeing from the Brady Hills Rich Rock era. So check there. And, and then he, he, you have to have an ability that, that brings a, a, a little caveat of wanting players to come to play for you. I think he has that box check, too. So I think he's the most likely source. Now, with all that being said, I think the best one, if you can, if you can lure him away from college, is David Shaw. I just think that when I look at Stanford and what they do and how he has them perform, I think David Shaw is, is somebody who truly understands what is necessary to get everything you can out of a player and who has a coaching pedigree and a building the program pedigree that has shown uh, if, if, if Jim Harbaugh built the program there, he's doing a damn good job of improving it and pushing it forward. And to me, that's a sign of, of, a, of a good head coach. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. OMG. What about you, man? Who's the head coach that you would choose or who's the best head coach available for us? Um, Harbaugh is the obvious go-to. Um, and, and I, I'm actually, I don't believe in, Well, I'm kind of against what writer said, cause Harbaugh is going to be, he going to be a free agent after this year, <laughs> after, after losing to Indiana like that, uh, he going to be a free agent. He going to have it. He going, yeah, he going, he going to be available. Um, but I think Harbaugh and then, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to take a, a coach in his first year, which I really don't like because that's, you know, but uh, I, the uh, offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, man, if he come available, um, I think that would be good, man. Um, I think that that would be one reason to keep Stafford uh, and build and build a system. And then, you know, and then we could replace him. But, um, I mean – or we can, or we can bring Jim Schwartz back. You know, <laughs> you know oh, what I'm saying? Man, gonna, I don't know about we're that. Bring, we're gonna bring Jim Schwartz built that defense. He built a monster. He built, he built the defense. He built a team the way a team is supposed to be built, and that's up front first. Not all the tricks and gimmicks with the receivers, the cornerbacks, and all that. He built the team up front. We run, we ruled the line of scrimmage when Jim Schwartz was a coach, and that's what I want to get back to. So I wouldn't be against bringing Jim Schwartz back. All right, that's an interesting take. I like it. Um, all right, there's another question, but I want to get to this one. Um, Frederick Jackson, he said, y'all told me if we had Stafford last year, we would have had a better record, and he's playing you know, now, and we have the same record. Yes, that's true. Um, clearly, he's not playing this year up to the standard that he was last year, so we were going off of his play from last year, but obviously now we have new information, right? And we can see he's not playing the same. And yes, if we played like how he is now, I don't think we would have had the same record. Or that we would have had the same, you know, we would have been better. 
That's not that's not even a fair assessment. Stafford was playing much better uh, last year, and plus, that's if you I, look yeah, at if you look at if you look at most of those most of those games, they didn't lose those games last year because of quarterback play. They lost it because of pathetic defense. Oh wait, that's still happening this year. Yes, like I don't understand this, people. It's still a defensive problem here. It's been a defensive problem since the defensive rocket scientists came here. So there's I mean, nothing today, changed. Today it was also an offensive problem. That's why these Stafford haters are coming. No, listen, out. listen. <laughs> that 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 can that can be the case. I get all that. That can be the case. But the reality is, all these things happen. Like 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 it starts with the defense. Like these things are 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 defensive remnants. Last year, if Stafford played, yeah, they win more than three games. Like it's just the reality. Like this ain't nothing that that can be made up. I don't care how bad he playing this year. If he plays last year. They're not losing to Dwayne Haskins and the Washington Redskins. But your defense is so pathetic, so terrible, that it's more open than a drunk prostitute who's been roofied. It's, it's not cool. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and act like Stafford is perfect. No, he's playing like crap. But the defense is worse than what, it crap, than what Stafford is playing. But what, what we do as Lions fans, typical same old Lions fan, we pile it on a quarterback. We pot on the quarterback. Let, let me let me help remind you what happened today. 206 yards on 22 carries and two touchdowns. They ain't got nothing to do with Stafford. That's all well, on the defense. Look, look, look. Well, we talked about in the pregame show, you need a balance, right, with the offense. Because if your offense isn't sustaining drives, which it really wasn't in the beginning of the game, then your defense is going to get tired very quickly. And, you know, it, it, your defense is going to be on the field the entire game. And that's a, that's what happened. And then they ran all over us. So, I mean, so, you know, going into that, I guess, why don't we stick with the run and how can we can't sustain drives? And, you know, Gary brings up a good point. He said, why don't we stick to runs when it's working? Uh, you know, he thinks it's because we rely on Stafford and we don't trust the run. What do you think? Can I say something real quick? Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I mean, go ahead, Ryder. I kind of get where you're coming from, Luke, where, you know, the defense gave up, you know, some big drives, some big plays. I get that. But, you know, and I'm not one to put games on Stafford normally, but this one, I mean, Stafford threw two really, really bad interceptions. Right. That's a 14-point swing right there. And how much did the Lions lose by? 14 points. So, I mean, this game is not solely on Stafford. I'm not saying in any way that it is solely on Stafford. But, you know, this is a game where Stafford was a big part of why we lost. Listen, I, Ryder, I agree with that. There's no disagreement there. However, we also got two block punts that end up being being a touchdown on one. I think the other one was a field goal or something like that. You're calling stretch plays on the on the on the goal line two yards out with Adrian Peterson. That's like telling Marshawn Lynch, "Hey, uh, listen, I know we only one yard away, but screen. They they're never going to see it coming. <laughs> Who cares if you know what's good coming?" On the one with Russell Wilson. You you gotta you gotta you gotta give the ball to the person if they know what's coming. You got timeouts. You got you got reason to do it. And to me, the play calling suck. The play calling the the coaching suck. The defense suck. And the biggest problem that has been consistent throughout the Matt Patricia era has been the defense. Even when Stafford was playing well, they were still losing. So yes, if you want to give this loss or give him a big chunk of the blame for today's loss, fair enough. But I'm looking at the whole body of work, and the whole body of work tells me this. The defense won this bad under under Jim Cowell. Jim Cowell was not a defensive coordinator. So why is it so bad under a guy who's supposed to be a defensive guy? Yeah, I don't I get it. Agree. No, I completely agree. I was just saying Stafford definitely holds part of that. Fair, fair enough. Uh, you want to take this question, Luke, real quick? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is, is this. They, they, the problem is they don't stick to the run because it's poor coaching. That's, that's, the, that's the most easiest, logical answer. It's poor coaching. And then once they get behind – now, all of a sudden, they just figure, well, we get the quarterback. Let's just throw it. But p I keep trying to tell people the the easiest way to turnovers is to having the ball be in the air. That's why the good teams run it, because it's a less distance for you to have error. When the ball is traveling through the air, it's so many things that can happen, as you saw with T.J. Hawkinson, who got a catch off the tip. So it, these types of things happen, and it's the reality as, as it stands right now. Um but a lot of this stuff that you're seeing is simply because they don't know how to commit to the run. And that's a mentality thing. If your coach don't have a run mentality, how, why would they have a run mentality? 
Look, I, I this is this is what I think about this question. Um, look, we even though we have Swift, he's a great running back. Even though we have Adrian Peterson and he's he's beyond his time, but he's still a good running back. And carry on is pretty good. We still don't have that dominant guy like Dalvin Cook that's just gonna destroy it doesn't matter if our, you know, if we don't have a hole or whatever. Like we don't have that guy and we don't have that success. So when we start off games and start off our beginning drives and stuff, running it, trying to run it to create like a run game, that never works for us, man. I like when we start off games aggressive and get a touchdown through passing. And then they're like, oh, crap, Stafford's on his uh, on his like shit, you know, and then they like back up. Then you can run the ball. Then you can do some creative stuff. And I feel like that's when we when we're creative like that or we do something that that opens up the run game and and makes them scared to stack the box. That's when we have success. Like, I feel like we're not able to do that because we start off games, even though this first game, the first pass, I love that they took a shot down the field. And honestly, if Stafford would have not underthrown him. That could have been a touchdown. He had him beat Marvin Hall first play of the game. Um, but after that, they ran it, didn't get anything, and then it was third and long. And then we got, you know, three and out. Didn't sustain the drive. Then Minnesota came with a touchdown. Nothing you could do. So mm-hmm. it's tough. But Ryder, man, what do you think about this? Uh, <clears throat> why don't we trust? Uh, th- do you think that we don't trust the run? And that's why we're not able to sustain a run and build a run? Or what do you think is the problem? I mean, I I don't know if it's that we don't trust it because our running backs did really like. I mean, if you look at what they did today on very limited snaps, I mean, they did really good. And I know you said we don't have that dominant running back, but we don't need a dominant running back to be effective. I mean, DeAndre Swift averaged four point nine yards a carry today. Adrian Peterson averaged three point six. Carry on Johnson averaged seven point two yards a carry. I mean, those are good running back stats. And if you have three running backs that average more than three and a half yards a carry on the game. You should win the football game. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're running Fact. backs, if you have three that average over three and a half yards a carry, including a running back that averages 7.2 yards a carry, you should not lose the game. And I don't think is that we don't have faith in our running backs because they've shown over and over again this season that they have what it takes. These running backs, that trio of running backs, can absolutely carry this team to victories, but Daryl Bevel doesn't let them. Daryl Bevel doesn't give them the opportunity. He doesn't give them enough carries to be successful, and he just – he doesn't – it's it's a coaching thing, and it's not that he doesn't have faith or doesn't have confidence. He just doesn't have the mentality to run the ball often enough. Okay. All right, OMG, what do you think, man? Do you think uh, – what, what, what do you think is the issue with us trying to build a run? You there? I think it's just our commitment to, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, I think it's our, our commitment to running the ball, man. It's, it's not about us having the back the, with the big name. It's about our old line blocking, which they do a pretty good job of run blocking. Um, Hank Furley has that old line playing better than it's played and run blocking and, and – since I can remember in a long time, and um, it's just us staying true to the run. And it really baffles me that Daryl Bevel, the Mr., you know, I'm the coordinator for Adrian Peterson and Marshawn Lynch, is like, why are you not sticking to the run? Like, that baffles me. That confuses the hell out of me that you had two ground-and-pound teams, and now you just pass happy. It's like Stafford really must be working his mo- his voodoo on them at practice because – they, they, they're not – like, nobody runs the ball. Like, no coordinator has stayed true to the run game since Stafford's been here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. I mean, I guess I guess that's fair. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say to that one. Uh, okay, so – do you guys see any other questions? I don't see any other questions. It, it's a- a few of them up in there. I, I was scrolling through, but I was looking at something because, like, I was looking at some of the things. Like, I know some people's looking like, Are you saying that the defense is at fault for what the offensive did because it was a bad play caller? I'm saying, No, this is me giving a complete view of what the major problem is. Our defense sucks, and that was my response to the to uh Frederick, who was saying that we will win more games had it not been this, but I also was saying that. If you look at today's game, yes, yeah, Stafford was hot garbage. Like I'm not, I'm not finna, I'm not finna sugarcoat a thing about that. However, however, um, when you're asking Kirk Cousins to throw the ball 20 times, and you ran the ball 
34 times compared to Stafford and, and, and Chase Daniels combining for 45 total passes. Like, that's a difference. Your quarterback is not asked to win the game for you. Um, whereas our quarterback is constantly being asked to win the game. They don't ask Patrick Mahomes to win the game for them. They try to keep it balanced out so he can do very minimum, and then when it, when it counts, say, okay, can you make a play? That's what they ask him. It's, and with most of the good quarterbacks, they're just asking them to make a play versus what's going on. But our defense can't be giving up 275 yards rushing and then giving up another two, uh, 212, uh, 220 yards passing. So in, in, in total, the defense giving up five touchdowns is not, it's not, it's not cool. It's just right. not cool. So okay. that's, that's all I'm pointing out. Let, let's, um, let's answer this one real quick. Uh, qu- quick answers with this one, then we'll wrap the show up. So, uh, uh, Ryder, how about we start with you, man? If the losing continues like this, uh, is the coaching staff gone by Thanksgiving? You think Sheila will make the call? Yeah, Ryder. I, I'm here. Sorry. Um, I mean, if you look at, I mean, if they keep losing, right? If they lose to Washington, that's when he should be fired because Washington is not that good. You know, if they lose to Carolina, I mean, Carolina looks all right with you know CMC back. Obviously, they competed with the Chiefs today. And then if they lose to the uh, the Texans on Thanksgiving at home, that's I mean, if they lose two out of the next three games, that has to be the nail in the coffin. Because right there, if you lose the next, if you lose two out of the next three, that's seven losses. That effectively puts you out of the playoffs. I mean, yeah, maybe you could sneak in at nine and seven, but you know, with the NFC West being as good it is, as it is with the NFC North having two teams that could compete, with the NFC South having two teams that could compete for the playoffs, like 9-7 and is not going to get it done this year. So, I mean, if you get to that seventh loss on Thanksgiving and, you know, you lose to the Texans at home on Thanksgiving in your, your really only primetime game of the year, and that's got to be the nail in the coffin. That has to be that has to be Patricia's last game as a head coach. I mean, it's it just – you can't go on. Sheila has to make this call, especially if the Lions lose to Washington and then Houston. You know what? Like, I was going to say no because I thought, like, nah, like they're probably going to wait till the end of the season. But I am with you 100% right here. If they lose against two – yeah, two of the next three games and lose on Thanksgiving, he's got to go. Like, what, what message does that send – your team and your fan base, if you just keep him around, like, no, man, no. Luke, man, what do you think? I know you want him gone already, but what do you think? I mean, it's a guarantee gone. The Thanksgiving game, listen, he can win the next two games, right? Like, I'm not being funny, y'all. He can win the next two games, be 5-5, five and five, and lose Thanksgiving. And I'm telling you, they still going to fire him. You think Sheila will fire him? I think she still will fire him. I'm going to tell you why. She'll because be they, tonight, but just... because, because they <laughs> already – they already are trying to take the Thanksgiving game away from the Lions. And so if you, if you look at it from a business standpoint, this is the one day that you have to be successful. Like when you think about Michigan, Michigan losing to Ohio State, it, it sucks for Michigan, a Michigan fan to lose to Ohio State. It really sucks when they lose to Michigan State. And that's why you're hearing people say it's time to move on from, from Harbaugh. Because it's like, bro, this is the game that you should not be losing. We got, we get better recruiting classes, we get better uh, facilities, and all this other crap that they come up with to make themselves feel like they better. And this is how we lose it. But, but if he lose the next three games, which I think he'll lose the next two or the three, um, I believe he'll lose the next two or three, possibly all three. To be honest with you, I think, I think with Christian McCaffrey being back, I just don't see how. We do anything with that running back. And with Washington, Washington has always beaten us. History-wise, Washington has given us that business. Um, you know, I mean, they beat us last year with freaking Dwayne Haskins. So, um, yeah, he's got to get fired. He, he's got to be fired, and he will be fired. Okay, OMG, man, what about you? You think he's gone by Thanksgiving if the losing continues? Okay, yep, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I agree. I, agree. I mean, he listen. First of all, he <laughs> nailing this one. He nailing this one. Better myself. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, right. but but let's but let but let's be honest though, people. Like seriously, I keep telling y'all, just enjoy the game. It, and to me, it's all these people in here. Like like I love me so not a Lions fan, but man, this dude is so intelligent. Man, I've talked to him so many times that he's so intelligent. It's ridiculous. But but we got to move away from this blaming the quarterback crap. Is Stafford can't do the stuff? Can't no. The problem is with coaching. It is what it is. Now I don't care how you try to clean it up. 
uh, go Lions. Uh, yeah, it's coaching. You, we can't overlook this crap no more. It's all coaching. These are coaching deficiencies. We could talk about Stafford and all this other stuff, but these, this is all coaching problems. Everything stems from poor coaching. That's all it boils down to, poor coaching. Um, I see it every day. I see it every day on basketball teams, soccer teams, hockey teams. Soon as they get the right coach in there, they are winning. Everybody said that the pitches was crazy when they brought in Larry Brown. Okay. Okay, that championship say otherwise. The respectability say otherwise. And to me, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who can create a good coach and give you a chance to win something. That's all you want. But right now, we're not getting that opportunity because, and I hate to say it, we should not have never hired this man in the first place. Never. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody feels that way now, for sure. Um, but, guys, thank you all for joining us today. It has been a great post-game show, regardless of us losing um, and, and getting destroyed by the Vikings and Dalvin Cook. But, hey, there's like 34 people in the chat right now, so if you could leave a like, because there's, there's only like 25 likes, that'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate that. But right or wrong, tell people where they can find you and just say uh, your goodbyes to the people in the chat. Yeah, so, you know, if you haven't gone and subscribed to my channel, please go do so. I am six subs away from 500 right now. Uh, you know, I'm really trying to get there soon, and, you know, I'm just trying to grow a little bit. You know, I put out Daily Lions content, and, you know, I think it's pretty good. A lot of other people think it's all right. So, you know, if you haven't checked me out, make sure you go check me out. I would, I'd be greatly appreciative. Make sure you subscribe to everybody else in the DSA, especially my two fantastic, uh, not coworkers, but I guess, you know, my two friends up here with me, Luke G and real Detroit lions fans, you know, they put out great stuff too. And, you know, just, you know, loss is unfortunate today, but we got to move on and we'll be all right next time. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. I always say this, man, we are lions fans for life. So we can't let these little, you know, these little setbacks, you know, tear us down. Cause we, you know, you'll just be a very sad person because if, if, if you were a fan 40 years ago, you would just have 40 years of miserableness. So you got to just look forward and uh, keep your chin up. So, yeah, and uh, for OMG, I don't know why he or he must have had technical difficulties or something, but go subscribe to him, OMG Lions Talk, uh, proud member of the DSA. Everybody in the DSA, I believe, is in my channels tab if you want to do that and just, you know, subscribe to all of them so you can get all of their content. Um, it's the best Lions content on YouTube for sure. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we hosted roundtables every Tuesday and Thursday, but uh, so definitely do that. And, uh, Luke, why don't you end this uh, broadcast today for us? Hey, absolutely. Thank everybody for coming in here. I'm going to make this really quick. We're getting right to the point. Positive note today, man. Understand something. That in all of all this that, that has happened with this, this game, uh, this team, the disappointments in, as, a, as a city when it comes to all of our sports organizations, guess what, people? We are still breathing and having fun. Yeah, that's right. We are still here. And as long as you still here, you still winning. That's the thing that we got to look at. We can't get caught up in what has happened and allow it to affect us for too long. It happened. Let's move on. Let's enjoy our days. Let's have fun. Let's call somebody we love or somebody we care about. Have a good conversation. Laugh, joke, clown, be pissed, come back, smile some more. And remember, you're still breathing. Okay? And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, don't be no chump. Please, please do your research.